Hello everyone, my name is Saurabh Singh and today I am going to teach about the modern concrete technology. It is from unit number 2nd and this is lecture number 23. Today I will teach you about the types of clay which is the most important topic of modern concrete technology. After watching this video, if you have any doubt, you can contact to me and you can also write an email on saurabh.singh at the rate myjanviha.com. Come on the learning or objective and learning outcome. You will know here about the types of clay which is used in the building products. And you will know about the use of a special clay and their types. In learning outcome, you will able to know about the types of clay. And you will also able to know what are the structure is constructed by the clay. So this lecture is going to be very important for all civil engineering student. Now first one is the uh, photograph of a uh, two things, one is a clay product and second one is a clay. And this is the clay and this clay is converted in very useful product which is known as clay product. Now come on the introduction of a clay product. Clay is the nat naturally occurring material minerals that is found almost everywhere on the surface of earth. It is a widespread in its occurrence that is common language. It is often referred as a earth. As you can see, this kind of clay is available all over the earth. And by the using of this clay, uh, you can make a very uh, useful product. And in old time, many structure, uh, if you will see the many old structure which is made in the villages, and these, that structure are made by these uh, clay. So you can understand what was the importance of this clay in the old time. And come on the introduction. Mineralogically, pure clay may be composed of one more minerals of clay groups such as kaolinite, montomerite, light, and vermiculated and elohim, etc. Kaolite is the most important mineral component of the common clay. Clay occurred universally, man has used them since ancient time for the making earthware of the great variety. So you can see these are the mineral sub clay group. First one is kaolinite and elite, which is used for the making of this kind of cloth. Now we will see the classification of clay. Clay are classified into two ways. First one is genesis or their mode of formation and their dominant character. All clay are classified into two ways. Uh, genesis or their mode of formation and their dominant characteristics. First one is residual clay and second one is here transported clay. So if anybody will ask to you what is the Classification of clay, you can answer it from here. Clay is classified into two parts. First one is residual clay and second one is transported clay. Come on the residual clay, as you can see here, this is your residual clay, which is means it is deposited on the one place. And it is deposited the, uh, near, the, uh, near the mountains and it is uh, it is uh, deposited on the surface of the earth. Now we will see the classification of residual clay. The residual clay include all varieties of clay that are formed covering, uh, covering the rock from which they are formed by the natural process. Such clay are pure in their chemical composition that is related broadly to the parent uh, rock. China clay is the best example of the residual clay. If you uh, see, if you will see at your home, there is many crockeries uh, are there, and these crockeries are made by the China clay. Now you can see the photograph of the residual clay. This is uh, deposited on the surface of the earth. Now come on the transported clay, which is second types of clay. These are the most common clays traded on the earth. They are formed by the disintegration and decomposition of the pre-existing rocks. 
by the neutral uh, natural agencies followed by the removal and transported transportation of broken pieces to four off places where they are finally deposited hence any such deposited of transported clay will have all particles transported from many places and different sources of material the transported clay are therefore quite heterogeneous and mineralogical and chemical composition so you can understand transported clay is not deposited on one place it is deposited on the surface of the earth and it is transported by the many uh, agencies like it is transported by the uh, it is transported by the water and it is also transported by the uh, air that's why the properties of all in all uh, solids particle is different from each other that's why it is known as heterogeneous material you can see this is the image of transported clay and this is on the earth the transported clay are sometimes further disintegrated into glacial clay marine clay alluvial clay and like a strain clay when glacier sees river and lakes respectively have played dominant role in their formation now we will see the classification of clay uh, on the basis of their dominant characters they are classified as into four group first one is china clay fire clay and vitrified clay and brick clay first one is a china clay it is the purest types of clay containing very high percentage of minerals kaolinite Kyoli, or kaolines which is represented by the a al2 si2 o5 oh4 it is considered high grade of clay and it is used for the manufacturing of copper and other propylene layers now you can see this is the image of china clay which is uh, very useful for the making of the clay products now we will see the classification of uh, this clay um, one is one more is here which is known as fire clay they are also called uh, rectifactory clay uh, and contain besides kaolinite and silica alumina in very high temperature without suffering any deformation of shape given to them at the time of molding they are mainly used in manufacturing of rectifactory bits that are great important in many metrocular mechanical and chemical operations this this is the image of a fire clay which is used for the making clay product and next one is uh, we drive clay these clay are rich in fusing compound like iron oxide carbonates of calcium magnesium the this clay is also called hardened burnt clay and is specially used for the manufacturing of facing brick flooring tiles sewer pipes and other similar ornamental and tiles clay product this is the use of vitrified uh, fired clay as you can see here many uh, these types of pipe is made by this clay and now come on the very important clay which is known as the brick clay these are low grade used most for the manufacturing of building brick and similar clay products brick clay are rich in silica alumina oxide iron oxide calcium magnesium and organic matter it is the mutual proportion of these components that define their stability or otherwise for making good quality of brick for the building construction the oxide of iron calcium magnesium acts as flux that flows easily at the brick making temperature and bind the alumina and silica particles thoroughly giving the brick desired property of cohesion and strength this this is the image of brick clay as you can see here and by the using of this clay uh, brick are manufactured now come on the brick what is the brick brick uh, i have prepared one separate video on the brick and brick is the uh, building material as you all know and there is also one definition of brick you will see here building brick may be defined as the structural unit of rectangular shape and conventional size 
that are made of suitable clay by the different process involving molding, drying, and burning. This this is the image of uh, Greek, as you can see here. This is the uh, well, uh, first class of brick which is used for the very fine construction work. It is also stabilized that even in remote exit, uh, ancient civilization brick were common material for of the construction. It is believed that. It was Egypt that brick were used some 6,000 years ago. Examination of sites in the in our country revealed that brick were used in Indian Valley civilization and Mohenjo-daro Harappa. So you can understand how much old is brick product. And these that time in very old civilization, as you, we know, Indus Valley civilization and Mohenjo-daro civilization. Both are the very, uh, both are the very uh, old civilization. On, on that time, brick were also used in the preparation of buildings, preparation of many construction uh, activities. Now these are the some images of the brick clay, which is uh, made by the uh, mud, and uh, it will it will burn. Then it will become the brick. These brick recommended for the pointing exposed face work in the masonry structure, flooring and reinforced brick work. So uh, first class brick generally used in the work of pointing and where we had to give the aesthetic view in the wall on that places you can use the first class clay brick. Now we will see the second class uh, brick. Are suppose, second class brick are supposed to have same requirement as the first class brick expect that small crack and distortions are permitted a little higher water a little higher water absorption of about 16 to 20 percent of its dry weight is allowed the casting strength should not be less than 7 newton per mm square these are these brick are recommended for all important and an important machinery work and centering of reinforcement brick and reinforcement concrete structure. So come on the third class brick. These are burnt, they are soft light color producing a dull sound when stuck against each other. Water absorption is about 25% of a dry wave. It is used for building temporary structure. It is generally used for used for the temporary structure and where we know where we do not need to uh, maintain a very good strength on the structure. On that place, you can use the third class brick. Now come on the strength. On the basis of use, what is the basis of use? Common brick, facing brick, and engineering bricks. On the basic of finish, these these are classified: sand faced brick, rustic brick. On the basis of manufacturing hand handmade brick, and there is also machine made brick. On the basis of burning, if you will talk about the classification of brick on the basis of burning, then it is classified into three part: pale brick and body brick and arch brick. On the basis of types: solid, perforated, hollow, and circular. These are the types of brick according to their uses. Now we will see what is the brick machinery. What is the definition of brick machinery? Brick machinery is made of brick unit bonded together with the mortar. Two essential component of brick machinery are therefore, as you can see, first one is a brick and second one is a mortar. Now what is the mortar? As you can see here, mortar acts as a cementing material and unites the individual brick unit together to act as a homogeneous mass. Following types of mortar may be used in the brick machinery like cement mortar, lime mortar, lime surkhi mortar, mud mortar and lime cement mortar. These are the also types of a mortar. Now we will see the some essential feature of the bond which is uh, given here, which is mentioned here. First one is alternative pairs will be sewn, sold either header or stature in the elevation. Every alternative header comes centrally over the joint between two structures 
in course below in the stretcher course the stretcher had a minimum lap of 1 by 4th their length over header there is no congestion of uh, continuous joint wall of even multiple of half break present in the same appearance on the both faces thus a course showing a stretcher of the front face will be also shown the stretcher of the back face wall of odd multiple half brief will show the stretcher on one face and header of one face of other face one face and header on the another place uh, another face the heighting of each of the thicker wall consists entirely of the header at least every alternative transversal joint is continuous from the face of the face face to face the header course should be never start with the queen closer as it will displace the queen closer should be placed just next to the queen header and queen closer are not required in the head stretcher course since the number of vertical joint in the header course are twice the number of vertical joints in the stretcher course are joined in the header course are made thinner than the joints in the stretcher course now we will see the flemish bond what is the flemish bond here in this types of bond each course is compa uh, compromised uh, comprised comprised of alternative header and stretcher every alternative course is start with the header at the corner queen closer are placed next to queen header in the alternative course to develop the face flap Every header is centrally support over the stretcher below, which is known as Flemish bond is also divided into two parts, which is known as double Flemish bond and a single Flemish bond. In the double Flemish bond, each course presents in the same appearance both in the face faces as well as the back faces. Alternative or alternate header and stretcher are laid into each course. Because of this, double Flemish bond present better appearance in the English better it present a better appearance than English bond. If you will use the Flemish bond in your wall, it will give the better appearance than English bond. Now this is the double Flemish bond as you can see. This is your header, that is your closer, header, closer, header, closer, and that will be your stretcher, header, stretcher, header, and that is the elevation of double flame is born space special feature uh, there is also some special feature of double flame is born which is mentioned here every course consists of header stretcher placed alternately the facing of backing of the wall in each course have the same appearance pin closer are used next to pin header in every alternative course in wall having thickness equal to odd multiple of half brick a bat and three quarter bats are amply used for wall having thickness equal to even multiple of half brick no bats are required the header or structure will come out as the header or structure on the same course in the front as well as the back faces now you can see the double flame is bond here now come on the single flame is bond what is the single flame is bond? Single flame is bond is comprised of double flame is bond facing and English bond backing and heightening in each other course. This bond is used to for the strength for the English bond and however cheaper it can be used for the backing and heightening of this bond. And comparison, there is also comparison between English bond and Flemish bond. This is also very important points which you need to know. English bond is stronger than Flemish bond for the wall thickness than one or one by uh, two brick. Flemish bond give more pleasing appearance, pleasing appearance than the English bond. Broken brick can be used in the form of bar in the Flemish bond. However, more mortar is required. Construction with the Flemish bond requires greater skill in the comparison to the English bond. Cement motor are used to uh, cement motor 
and line surkhi motor are used to do the construction of all kind of structure man motor is also used for the low rise building and which is carries light weight line cement motor known as the guard motor and gauge motor is made by the mixing of cement and line the, the advantages are increased water retainability workability bonding properties and frost resistance the motor gives a good and smooth plaster finish and the chief properties of hardened motor are strength development of a good bond with the building units resistance to weathering and those of, of green motor mix are mobility playability and water retention in addition the motor should be cheap and durable and this should be not affect the durability of building units in contact the joint made with the motor should be developed crack now we will came on the some components of the brick which you can see here first one is stretcher second one is a header and third one is a lathe and fourth one is prepend and four, fifth one is a bed first we will see what is the definition and what is the meaning of a stretcher a stretcher is the longer face of a brick 19 into 9 cm as seen in the elevation of a wall a course of brick in which bricks are laid as stretcher on facing of its known as the stretcher course or we also call it stretching course now we will see header what is the header and how it looks a header is the shorter face of a brick which is uh, 9 cm into 9 cm a course of brick which all the brick are laid as a header on the facing is known as the header course or heading course and lap wall what is the lap we will see here lap is the horizontal distance between vertical joint of successive brick course and perpend perpend is the imaginary vertical line which includes the vertical joint separating two adjoining brick what is the bed <coughs> as you can see here bed is the lower surface which is 19 cm into 9 cm of a brick when laid flat and closer it is a portion of a brick which cut made longitudinally and it is used to close a bond and in the course a closer help to preventing joint successive course to the come vertical line closer may be various types defined below now you can see this is the image of a twin closer and that is your king closer this is your king closer and it is cut from the middle of the brick and that is your king closer it is diagonally cut on the corner and that is your b level b weld closer which is diagonally cut from the one side to another side of header and that is your bar now we will see what is the definition of twin closer it is a portion of brick obtained by the cutting of brick light wise into two portion length wise into two portion this twin closer is the brick which is half as wide as the full brick this is also known as twin closer half when twin closer is broken into two piece it is known as the twin closer quarter such closer is the dust brick piece which is one quarter of the brick size that is your image of twin closer which you can see here and you can understand how uh, how twin closer can be made in the use uh, how twin closer can be taken the use of construction activity now we will see twin closer what is the twin closer as you can see image this is cut diagonally from one side to another side from it is start it is started from header and it is finished from the stretcher now you can see the definition of twin closer it is the portion of brick which is so cut that the wide of one it in for end is half that of whole that of a full brick while the width at the other end is equal to the full width it thus obtained by the cutting and triangulation piece between the center of one end and to center of another side it is half header and half stretcher face as you can see this is your half stretcher face and this is your sorry this is your half header face and this is your half stretcher face 
now we will closer we will see what is the weld closer it is a spherical form of the king closer in the in which the whole length of brick is beveled in such a way that half width is maintained at the one end as you can see and full width maintained at the another end now Metrate coal closure. This is turn of the metrate closure. It is a portion of a brick whose one end cut splayed on meter or for a full width. The angle of splay may be from 40 degree to 60 degree. Thus, one longer face in metered closure is the full length of a brick, while other longer face is smaller length. As you can see the image of this. Now we will come on the part. What is the bot? Everyone knows about the bot. This is the image of half bot. This is the image of three quarter bot, and this is a beveled bot. Now we will see the definition of bot. It is a portion of a brick cut across the width. Thus, a bot smaller in the length than full brick. It is the length of the bot is equal to the half length of the original brick. It is known as the half bot. A three quarter bot is one having its length equal to three quarter of the length of full brick. If a bot has width beveled, it is known as beveled bot. Now we will see the bull nose. What is the bull nose and what is the space in a brick? Bull nose, it is the special mold brick with the one is rounded single bull nose, which is known as the single bull nose. As you can see the image of bull nose and with two edge round double bull nose is, is it will if two uh, two edge uh, the corner of brick will be rounded here also it will call double bull nose these are used in chopping or such positioning where rounded corner are performed to sharp rise and is place these are the special molded brick which is often to use from the plane is place stretcher and splays header, you can see the image of splays also. Now we will see the comparison between clamp burning and clean burning. This is also very important because uh, in many exams, these types of questions have been asked. What is the difference? What is the main difference between clamp burning and clean burning? First one is we see by, by the capacity and about 20,000 to 10,000 brick can be prepared at a time. In clean burning, average 25,000 of brick can be prepared per day. If you will see the cost of fuel, then here in clamp burning, they are required low gas powder we can use and little and uh, little powder we can also use in the clamp burning. And in clean burning, generally high high as coal dust is to be used. Now come on the initial cost base. Very low as no structure are built uh, are to need to build. In clamp burning you do not need to prepare a, a structure for the uh, burning of a brick. In clean burning more as permanent structure are to be constructed. Qualities of brick. Now we will see what is the uh, which quality of brick is good. Uh, it is good of clean clean burning uh, uh, brick or it is good of clean burning clay brick. So if you will talk about the quality percentage of good quality brick is small, but sixty or so. The percentage of good quality bricks are more about ninety percent. So you can understand. If you will do the burning method clean, it will give you the more quality brick. As you can see here, we are getting 90% of a good brick. Now come on the regulations of fire. It is not possible to control or regulate fire during the process of burning. And in this clean burning, fire is under control throughout the process of burning. So you can understand how much uh, what is the advantages of clean burning in this process, in the making of brick process. 
skill supervision occurred. if you will talk about the skill supervision here not necessary throughout the process of burning but in clean burning continuous skill supervision is necessary a structure in flame burning you can prepare the temporary structure but in clean burning you have to prepare the permanent structure which is uh, in the form of chim chimneys suitability first we will uh, now we will see the suitability suitable with the bricks are to be manufactured on a small scale when demand of brick is not continuous suitable when brick are manufactured on a large scale when there is a continuous demand of brick now we will see the time of burning and cooling it is required 2 to 6 months for burning and cooling brick here what is the time duration for the boiling brick in the clean burning actual time for burning is the one of one chamber is about 24 and only about the 12 days are required for cooling brick now we will see the wastage of uh, heat in which method heat will be waste more here there is considerable wastage uh, of heat from top and side and hot fuel gas is not properly utilized in clean burning hot fuel gas is used for dry and preheat raw bricks hence wastage of heat is least so you can understand here by your uh, common sense which uh, which one is a good method of burning a brick so in in clay burning we saw we required uh, there is also some advantages of clay burning like we do not need to uh, expense expend a lot of money on the Uh, structure making of structure we can uh, do work by the making of temperature temporary structure and here is uh, in flame burning there is no required of skilled person but in clean burning you have to make the permanent structure and there is also requirement of a very skilled labor and very skilled supervision so this these two are the process by which we we can uh, prepare our brick clay uh, clay brick and these two are uh, very important if anybody will ask to you what is the difference between flame burning and clean burning say you can say clean burning is the advancement of flame burning flame burning nowadays nobody is using flame burning because of uh, because of uh, it there you have to you have to use a lot of energy here and there will be a lot of energy will be also waste and it will be also costly nowadays that's why we are using clean burning method for the burning a brick come on the comparison between bull trench and hoffman's clay there is also some difference between full trench clean and half main clean here first we will see the continuity which continuity which give the good continuity here first bull trench clean semi continuous in strict sense because it has no roof and cannot burn the during the monsoon so uh, half main clean is perfect because it has the permanent roof and burning operation can be carried out throughout the year so there is a disadvantage of blue uh, bull trench clean in monsoons like in rainy season you cannot you cannot uh, uh, burn your brick in bull trench clean but in half main clean you can easily do work uh, continuously 12 month and you can also prepare a lot of bricks by the half month clay now we will see the initial cost low cost because uh, construction is ordinary and high because construction required perfect design and high quality material so you can understand here the initial cost in bull trench clay is less because we do not need to prepare a very uh, very good quality of structure for the bull trench clay 
um, you can also do work by the making of a ordinary type of structure but in hoffman plane you have to use the high you have to prepare the very high quality of structure because construction is required uh, and in this uh, construction of hoffman plane it is required uh, to use very high quality material operational cost now we will see the operational cost higher operational cost is higher in bullet train frame because quantity of fuel is consumed is more and conventional of heat is less half main plane lower because maximum conservation of heat is possible in this type of plane now we will see the quality of brick ratio of this quality of total brick is less here the ratio of this quality to total brick is quite high now we will see the suitability it is suitable for low investment production of a brick and it is uh, most suitable uh, half men half men's plane is most suitable for semi mechanized and mechanized production so now you can understand what is the difference between bull trench plane and half men's plane and uh, which cost more for the uh, burning of the bricks as you can see here if you will if you use half men plane then it will be permanent for road construction and uh, half men plane on half men plane you can do work uh, also in the rainy season but in bull trench plane you cannot do work in the rainy season just because of rain problem and the cost of bull trench plane is also low in comparison of half men plane so this was the comparison between bull trench and half men plane this is also very important point which you should remember what is the difference between bull trench plane and half men plane now we will see the mcqs and there is first question which one of the following incident of brick earth enable the brick retain its shape so here is the option is given alumina magnesia iron silica and here uh, you can see your right answer will be here d d will be your right answer now uh, we know uh, which uh, we know the uh, silica which uh, retain the brick shape and enable to brick to retain its shape due to the silica that's why there will be silica will be your right answer and right answer is here d come on the next question the axis of silica in brick earth result what is the Uh, what will be the effect of uh, axis of silica in a earth brick what will be happen first option is given here very light brick very heavy brick loss of cohesion and none of these and here right answer will be your c that will be your right answer means loss of cohesion if silica will increase in the earth brick there will be loss in the cohesion come on the next question next question is three a uh, third lime is mixed with the brick earth too what is the role of lime here first option is given impart plasticity increase the permeability increase durability prevent the shrinkage let's see what will be here right answer right answer here will be d which will prevent the shrinkage lime generally prevent the shrinkage in the brick and that is the use of lime now come on the next question which of the following impart red color in the brick into the brick and here option is given a silica iron oxide lime magnesia as we know iron oxide gives the or impart the color in a brick and here right answer will be your uh, b iron oxide iron oxide provide the color or it impart the color in your brick 
and here right answer will be iron oxide. Come on the next question. Alumina in brick earth gives the bricks. What is the work of alumina in the earth brick? You will see here. Resistance to shrinkage. The option is plasticity. C option is given color. And D option is given strength. Let's see what will be the right answer. Right answer will be B. Means alumina provide the plasticity in the brick earth. And there your right answer will be plasticity. Now come on the next question. If Lorentz of brick is due to what is the uh, reason here? Soluble salt present in the clay for making brick, high porosity of brick, high silt contained in brick earth, and excessive burning of clay. Let's see what will be the right answer here. Here, right answer will be soluble salt present in the clay for making brick. If Lorentz will be happened due to soluble salt in which is present in the clay for making a brick. Now come on the next question. The position of brick cut from angle other, other than right angle in the plan is known as what will be the right answer here? Option is given Q in closer, scanity closer, closer and Q closer and here right answer will be your scanity closer that will be your right answer. Now come on the next question. The size of standard modular brick is this is a very important question and this question had been asked in many government exams. So you need to remember what is the size of standard modular brick. And so if anybody will ask to you what is the size of standard modular brick, you can answer it. It is 20 centimeter into 10 centimeter into 10 centimeter. Oh, sorry. It is 19 into 9 into 9 centimeters. That will be your right answer. And 20 into uh, 10 into 10, it is the size of uh, standard brick. That is the size of standard brick. Now come on the next question. The modulus of rupture of a good brick should be about in uh, it is unit is given newton per mm square let's see what will be the right answer here a uh, right answer will be 2.5 newton per mm square the modulus of rupture of a good brick should be uh, 2.5 newton per mm square this is also very important question and you need to uh, remember what is the rupture what is the modulus of rupture of a good brick and you can also say it what is the Modulus of rupture of a first class brick, it will be equal to 2.5 Newton per mm square. Now come on the 10th question. When brick is cut into two hevel, hevels along its length on one of portion of its known as metered closer, queen closer, king closer and chronica closer. Here your right answer will be queen closer. Queen closer will be right answer. Now come on the next question. Consider the following statement. And that was, uh, that is not question, your question. And this was all about the today's MCQs. And now this is the uh, time to give the reference. Uh, there is also two book which is known as, first one is known as Building Construction which is written by the VC Premier. Second one is civil engineering material, which is written by the professor Singh. And today we covered brick machinery and we uh, covered also what is the size and what is the incident of brick and what is the types of uh, brick is available in the market and how they can do, how they can be used in the construction. And this was very important video. If you are a civil engineer, you should know what is the basics of a brick machinery and what is the size, what is the bond, and what are the types of brick components like we today saw, pin closer, king closer, and how about these are uh, the these are the components of brick which we use during the construction of a wall or column where we can use these bricks.
Thank you for watching this video.